tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we explore the beautiful Hawaiian shoreline and meet the little creatures that live there. We'll have some fun painting what we see, and then I'm going to show you how I draw an ama crab. We'll even learn a song about how the little things in the sea have responsibility, just like you and me. All this and more on a beach walking episode of Painting in Paradise! Woohoo! When I was a kid, one of my favorite things to do was go to the tide pools and see what I could find. What an amazing world exists within the water, rocks, and sand. Now that I'm a little older, I still like to cruise the shoreline and marvel at all the life that thrives in the tide zone. The is always nice, but you can even see marine life in abundance right in the heart of Waikiki. Be alert while cruising the shoreline, cause eels, like this zebra mori eel, sometimes come on shore in search of food. Consider yourself really lucky if you get to see a Hawaiian monk seal close to shore. This one's making a snack of a trigger fish. This little octopus was found hiding in a bottle cap on the beach. It was quickly returned to the sea. On the rocks at the water's edge are little black shells called pipipi. Limpets are known as opihi. Here's what a cowrie shell looks like when it's alive. And then there's the beautiful kupe'e that move about in the dark of the night. When we return, we'll meet marine biologist Keoki Stender. When I have questions about the creatures of the seashore, I ask my friend Keoki Stender. Keoki has spent a lifetime in the ocean and much of it photographing sea creatures including fishes and invertebrates of Hawaii and the world. Aloha, my name is Kiyoki Stender. I am an underwater photographer, and a, I produce a website called marinelifephotography.com. Uh, my life is centered on the ocean. I grew up in a family that liked to fish and go tide pooling and snorkeling, and so I decided when I went to college that I wanted to become a marine biologist. And that led me to underwater photography and creating a website to share what I have learned about the ocean with others so they can identify and know more about what we see in the ocean and around it. Crabs have always intrigued me, so on this day I asked Keoki to tell us about the kinds of crabs that we can find at the shoreline. Okay, there are two sand crabs in Hawaii. They're also known as ghost crabs or ohiki. And there's one you see during the day, the smaller one with the rectangular shell and these rounded eyeballs. And there's a nighttime one with the much larger with the pointy eye stalks. And when you see the, their burrow, it's like a big volcano shaped pile of sand in a large hole. Um, they come out at night mostly and they feed upon things that wash in, such as Portuguese man of war. The Aama crab or rock crab is really common on rocky shores. And you'll see them scurrying about on the, the rock face just above the water line and they can actually breathe without being underwater. They, they have gills, but they can also breathe in dry air. And they feed upon a limu that lives on the rocky surfaces. Uh, when you see a dried up or dead crab shell on the rocks, it's actually 
a shell that the crab has shed in order to grow larger. See, crabs have to do that. They have to crawl out of their old shell. When the shell is softened, crawl out, and then they can actually inflate their bodies a little bit to grow, and then the shell slowly hardens around them, and they leave behind that orange, dried up, empty shell. In addition to Aoma crabs, you can find a variety of different types of crabs along the shoreline. Uh, for example, the 7-Eleven or convex crabs, they have really rounded, thick shells and they live in tide pools. You can also find other types of rock or Aoma type crab relatives. And you can also find um, some swimming crabs in tide pools. Swimming crabs have what look like paddles on their <laughs> back legs. We can see you. This mangrove crab, also known as the Samoan crab, is a type of swimming crab that was introduced to Hawaii from Samoa. This crab has a vast native range, as does the mangrove plant, which the crab gets its common name from. You just gotta love hermit crabs. As they grow, they scavenge shells once inhabited by other animals, so they're always in fashion. The Portuguese man o' war is propelled by a beautiful bluish bubble that floats to shore via onshore winds. Its vibrant blue tentacles can inflict a painful sting if it contacts you. When they do come ashore, tiny creatures like ghost crabs and crustaceans known as sand turtles scurry to bury and eat them. If you focus in on the little things, you may find that one thing soon leads to another. This pleated rock crab, busily scurrying around eating algae, runs into a convex crab, which is trying to make a meal out of a sea urchin. Cruising a shoreline, remember to be alert and respectful of the wildlife. This honu, or green sea turtle, is enjoying a limu lunch. So when you're at the shoreline, use all your senses to observe all the beauty around you. Be alert, because even a little eel can give you a bite if you get too close. When you go to the beach, it's always a good idea to be aware of what the tide is doing. If the tide is rising, you can expect that it's going to get a little deeper and rougher. And now sit back and enjoy the Ohiki song about how the little things can make a big difference. Ohiki, Ohiki, Okekai, Hiki no, Hiki no, Hiki, He papa i. A ama a ama kapohaku malama malama makamai o hiki o hiki o kekai hiki no hiki no hiki he papa i a ama a ama kapohaku malama malama makamai o hiki o hiki o kekai hiki no hiki no hiki he papa i a ama Responsibility. If you do care for this land, take care of the ocean. 
One of Hawaii's most cherished crabs is the black rock crab, also known as Aama crab. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing an Aama crab. Okay? I tell you what, remember to press softly. How are we going to press in the beginning? Softly, right. We're going to press softly in the beginning because we don't want to dig into that paper. Um, we're going to just kind of form up our crab and we'll come back later pressing harder or you can use a bigger pen. Um, get a pencil, a paper. Uh, I'm using a little pen so you can see my lines, but you can start with a pencil and remember to press softly. Okay, here we go. I'm going to make a little circle right here in the middle of the page for the Ahama crab's body, okay? Just pressing softly and loosely, just about that big, and that's going to be the body of our Ahama crab. Now on each side of his body, there are four legs and his pincers. I don't know if they're pincers or pinchers, but anyway, they like get food for him, okay? I'm first going to start by making ovals, and I'm going to make four of them, okay? One, two, three, four, on each side. One, two, three, four, and those are going to be the start of the Aama crab legs. Now, after I got the initial oval, I'll do another skinny oval, and then I'll do a little sickle-shaped one like that, okay? On each leg. So you see I've divided each leg into about three sections, okay? All right, and I've got my Ama Crab's body. I've got four legs on each side. And now I'll give them a couple of pincers, okay? And I'm just gonna put a little oval there. And on this one, I'm gonna make one top of it pretty big, and then boom, just like that. Although I almost got tiny pincers compared to some of the other crabs, like the 7-Eleven crab. And I'll do one more on this side. Oh yeah. I mean, all my crabs gotta eat, right? You gotta bring those pincers in to bring the food in. Now you can put a couple little circles right there where the maka is gonna be, and the maka, of course, is the eyes, right? Okay, now I just basically formed up my Aama crab. I tell you what, I'll put him on a rock. I think I'll put him on a rock. There's my rock, okay? Now that we've got our Aama formed up, I'll use a bigger pen and you can start pressing harder. You can start putting some details on this picture. Now I'll use a bolder pen so you can see what's going on. It's kind of the basic shape of the Ama's pattern. Now, if you look closely at the Ama's back, you can see lines, and I'll go and put some lines there. Oh, you know how I like to make my airplane noises when I'm drawing. And you can put some nice little designs in here too. And right there, I formed up and I've outlined my Ama crab. 
I'm going to give it a little bit of shading. Let's say the sun's coming from this direction, and you'll see a little bit of shading on the bottom part of the ama crab. And here's where it gets fun. You can do some shading in the shape of the legs and get it a little dark right at the point there, okay? Some shading right at the legs. And right at the point, it can be a little bit of a darker shading. And the shading actually helps when you go in between the legs. It helps the legs to show up better, yeah? So I'll put some shading over here and lead them right to the point there. Put some shading in between the legs here. Coming right to the point. Put some shading in between the legs there. Come right to the point like that. And wherever shading helps to make the picture look better, you can go ahead and put more shading. Now this is a rock. You can put little dents in it and holes and crevices and cracks. I tell you what, you can even put a little ocean action back there. You know, like here's the shape of the rock. I'm gonna make a wave back there, okay? Oh boy, it makes me wanna go surfing. And some splashes. And there you have it. Your black rock crab called the Ama Crab. When we return, we'll have a painting workshop featuring some of our favorite shoreline animals. It doesn't take much sight to see me. The ocean's part of Thailand. Now join us as we paint some of our favorite shoreline animals at a workshop in Waimanalo. There's a place that I come from On the east side of paradise Where blue meets blue And the ocean and sky become one Gail, hey, do you believe this yellow well, this movie is going to turn into something beautiful? Oh, yes. All right, you get to stay. <laughs> Kilauea paints bluish reflections on the rocks to make them look wet. Of ancient days, take me back to another time. At Pahonu and Kaupo, ancestors came to know this place so far. Jim hasn't painted since he was a kid. He's painting the Humuhumu and the Huapua'a. No other place to be. Margaret's painting the Ohiki. I think it's dreaming of swimming well, over to Wanana Island. Gail's painting a mori eel. In Hawaiian, the word for eel is puhi. At the end of the day, we all had some beautiful pictures, learned a lot, and had a great time. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about the little sea creatures and how to draw the ama crab. I'd love to see what you did, so why don't you send your art to patrickchingart.com. Aloha. No matter yeah. how small yeah. you may be, pictures. you'll play a big part in the sea. If you live on earth with me, we have responsibility.
ti Doesn't take much sight to see the ocean's part of you and me. If on the 